Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this video, I'll be teaching you about permissions. Okay guys, welcome back. Now I'm gonna teach you guys how to set up permissions for your commands and just permissions for plugins in general. So if you ever played on a server before, sometimes you try to run certain commands like slash kill or something like that and it doesn't let you. It says you don't have permission to run that command, right? And those permissions can be granted to you by permissions plugins like luck perms or group manager or something like that. And they can be taken away as well. But how do those permissions actually come to be and where can we define those? That's what we're gonna be learning in this video, okay? So whenever you create a plugin in Minecraft, you can actually define your own custom permissions just in your plugin.yml that we learned about before as well as in your plugin code. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to do both methods. They usually are used together though. But first we're gonna learn about how to specify permissions in your plugin.yml, okay? So here we've got a project I already created. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new command, so. All right, so now let's go ahead and check to see if cinder is an instance of player. If it's an instance of player, then we're going to do player p is equal to player cinder. Just cast that. And then this is not working just because we have to change it from that to that. You can keep it if you want to, but there we go. Now we have a player. So now if a player ran the command, we can simply do p dot send message. Wow, you have so much swag. Awesome, so there we go. We got a simple command we're gonna use to test out this plugin and learn about permissions. So we're gonna go ahead and register this now. So test, and we're gonna set the executor to new test command. There we go, new command, we registered the command. So now how do we define the permissions for this command? Because right now, with the way we have it set up, well, first let's go ahead and register the command. So commands, test, description, this is a test command. So with the way we have it set up currently, anyone can run this command who's on the server, right? All they have to do is join the server and run slash test because there's no permission controlling uh, who can run this command or not. Now the first way you can control who can run the command or not is just by adding a new line and doing permission. So you have two options, you have permission and you have permission message. So let's start with permission. So if you do permission, you can define your own custom, what's called a node, a permission node. So if you've ever worked with, uh, you know, luck perms or group manager or any permission uh, related plugin, you will know that there's little nodes that you can use, and these are the permissions themselves, the actual names of the permissions. But if you're not familiar, let me just give you an example. So if you have a plugin like Essentials and you want to be able to run slash, um, what's, a, what's an Essentials command? Slash inventory. Uh, one example of a permission for that command will be Essentials dot inventory. That's usually what a permission node looks like, okay? It's just the name of the plugin and then the actual thing that the permission is for. Um, another example would be essentials.star, which is a wildcard, meaning that it gives you usually a bunch of permissions under that group. And you can define this however you want to, though. You can have like essentials.wiener.star, essentials.wiener.poop, anything you want, okay? Um, that's really up to you. But usually the convention is to keep it simple and keep it the plugin name, dot, and then what the permission is for. So in this case, my plugin is simply called permissions. So I'm going to call it permissions.test. So now with this simple addition here, anyone that runs the test command has to have the permissions node of permissions.test, okay? And the way that they can get this node is either by being given the permission with a permissions plugin, or they can be opt on the server. Whenever you're opt, that means you have every permission. So um, this will give you the command permission usually. So we can do op Illuminati. And now I can pretty much run any command on the server, regardless of the permissions, okay? And now I should be able to run that command because I'm opt, right? And then you have another option here, permission dash message. So this will specify what happens whenever you run the command, but you don't have permission to run the command. So you don't have this node, for example, okay? So you'll say something like, you don't have permission to run this command, okay? So that's what that is for. But the thing is, is that this does not work currently for the latest version of Minecraft I have found at least. It might work for you if I'm doing something wrong, but I think it's because Minecraft has since updated the way that commands work, so this does not work for me anymore. Uh, just this part here. This part still works, you know, you can specify permissions for a command, but the message that runs whenever you don't have permission does not work anymore. What will happen instead is you try running the command and it just says command not found. So instead of being denied access to the command, you can't even find the command basically when you try running it. So um, just to let you know, okay? But this is really the most important one here, permission. If you wanna specify custom permission messages, I'll show you how to do that in a second when we do it in the code, okay? So anyway, let's go ahead and compile this now and throw it on the server and see what happens. Okay, I'm back. Remember that I'm opt currently, so I should have every permission pretty much. So I can do slash test now, and I get, wow, you have so much swag. Perfect. And now if I de-op myself, so de-op Illuminati, if I do it again, 
now I won't even find the command, which makes sense because I don't have permission anymore, okay? And that's it. That's how you can define permissions for commands that you create with your plugins. You just define your own custom node here. And whoever you want to be able to run the command just has to be given this permission node using a permissions plugin or being opt, okay? So this allows you to define what permissions someone needs to be able to run a command. But to make your permission nodes like this one here visible to permission plugins and to give them a description, you can specify another section under commands called permissions. So under permissions, you define every permission node that your plugin has. So currently we only have permissions.test and we can do permissions.test and then we do a colon, press enter, and now we can give it a description. So it says a short description of what this permission allows. And we could say allows someone to run the slash test command. So as we saw before, this is not actually required for you to be able to set a permission for a command, but this is again very useful because it allows other permission plugins to see the different uh, permission nodes that your plugin offers and give them descriptions as well so that server owners can uh, more easily understand what permissions they need to assign. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can define a description, you can define uh, the default. So the default uh, option specifies the default state for the permission. And there's four different options. You have true, false, op, and not op. So let me explain the, what this means. So true means that everyone who joins the server will have the permission. Simple enough, right? False means that everyone who joins the server will not have it by default. So it needs to be given to them, right? Simple enough as well. And now we have op, meaning that whoever is opt will automatically have the permission. And this is the default functionality. That's why when I opt myself originally, I was automatically given the permission to run this command. Otherwise, if I set it to not op, I will not be able to run this command by default unless I'm given it explicitly, okay? Um, that's how that works pretty much, okay? So you have true, false, op, and not op, and they're pretty self-explanatory. Usually, unless you want to have some really custom functionality, you can just leave it. You don't, you don't even have to have it, really, because anyone who's opt will automatically have it, and they can just be given it manually by permissions plugin, okay? I'm just going to keep it as not op just to show you that even when I'm not opt, it does not work still because that's what we told it to do, all right? Um, and then the other final option that we can use for a permission is children. So it says allows other permissions to be set as a relation to the parent permission. So what this really means is that you can have other permissions that uh, are given if this one is given. So let me explain what I mean. So we'll do children. So we'll press enter and now we want to give it just a list of every permission. So same way we're doing here, list of permissions. We want to give a list of children permissions. So for example, we can do permissions.explode uh, and then we want to say true or false. I'll explain that in a second. Then we can do permissions.kill um, We'll set that to false, I'll explain that in a second, and we can keep going from there, okay? So what this means is that whenever someone is given the permission permissions.test, they're also given the permissions permission.explode and the permission permissions.kill, okay? But they both have, and each one of these has to have a true or a false value. And what these correspond to is if they have true, this means that the permission uh, automatically is given if you are given the parent, just like I just told you, right? But if we set it to false, this means that if you have the parent permission, you are not gonna have this permission, okay? So it's the opposite. That's all that means. So usually you just want true, I would imagine, right? Because you want it to be inherited. That's the whole point of having children, usually. So again, if you have the parent permission, permissions.test, for example, you can have permissions.explode and permissions.kill as long as they are true, all right? And also just remember, I, it's called permissions.test only because that's my plugin name. It has no relation to this. This is the actual plugin.yml uh, config option here. And these are just the names of my plugin for these different permissions and nodes that we are coming up with, all right? But yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go ahead and run our, our plugin again and compile it and see what it looks like in the server. All right, I'm back in the server. I'm now an opt player, so I can do slash test. No, I cannot because again, we specified in our plugin.yml that whoever needs to run test needs the permission permissions.test. And then when we specified what permissions.test is down here, we set the description, but then we set the default to not op, meaning that whoever is opt will not have this permission. It'll only be people who are not opt, okay? So it's the opposite. So if I go ahead and deop myself again, so deop Illuminati, I should be able to run the command. And I can, awesome. So it says, wow, you have so much swag, perfect. Okie dokie, so that's how you can define permissions for your commands using the plugin.yml, and also give the permissions that you define, uh, some descriptions, some default functionality, meaning whoever can have access to it, as well as some children permissions, okay? So if you ever need to add more, you can simply, you know, go back on the indentation and add, you know, whatever per permissions you want to add from there, okay? Now, another way to control permissions is within the code itself, like I said before. So even without defining the permission you need to run the command here, you can also define it within the, the actual code uh, for the command as well. So for example, if we want to make it so that 
Um, again, whoever wants to be able to run the slash test command needs a certain permission. So all we have to do is do if p dot has permission, so p for player. If they have permission, permissions dot test, we can do some code. Um, so we could say if they have the permission, then go ahead and uh, send this message here. Otherwise, if they don't have permission, you can do p dot send message. You do not have permission to run this command bozo. So because we have fine green control over what happens whenever they have the permission or not, we can also define uh, whatever happens when they don't have the permission, such as sending them a custom message or killing them in their Minecraft family, right? So this is a much more customizable way uh, than just using the plugin.yml. But it's important to say that these should use, be used together because uh, we are you know, defining what happens when they have their permission or not in the code. But here, it's still important to define the actual permissions for your plugin so that other plugins like luck perms and permissions plugins can pick up on what permissions are needed and their descriptions as well. And the, also you can define you know, default functionality for who gets the permission or not, okay? But we don't need this anymore because we are defining that within the code. So this part, you still need the actual permissions uh, part of it, okay? So again, you're just making up what the node is. So the permissions node can be anything, but it's usually just the name of the plugin dot and then what the permission is about. So I changed this back to op, by the way. So now if we go back to the server, we'll go, let's do slash test. And because we're opt, we should be able to run it. And it says, wow, you have so much swag, awesome. And then if we go ahead and deop ourselves, and I run it again. Now I can still see the command. It lets me run the command, but it says you do not have permission to run this command, bozo. So I can run the command in the chat, but it doesn't actually execute any of the logic that we wanted to do because we don't have the permission, okay? So again, that's one of the benefits of having uh, the permission being checked directly in the code is you can have more fine-grained control over what happens, all right? Um, so let's go back to the code now. And so basically one thing you need to realize is that permissions are not always just useful for commands. You can also use them in any situation. So since we have access to has permission on a player, that means that basically anywhere we have a player, we can also check a permission. So for example, if we go to make a new uh, event listener here, we can say block break listener, block break event E. So this is triggered whenever a player breaks a block, right? So we could say something like if uh, e dot get player dot has permission permissions dot block break. So if they have that permission, then they can go ahead and continue. If they don't have it, we can do e dot set cancel, and that will cancel the block from being broken. All right. So that's exactly how that would work. Um, and of course, we're not defining this permission node within our plugin .yml, So um, this description, so it won't have a description and it won't have a default and it won't have any children and also any permissions plugin will not be able to just, you know, pull it up automatically. So let's go ahead and add it there in that case. So permissions dot block break. I think that's what it's called, right? So block break. Great. We'll say description, um, allows someone to break a block. Simple enough, right? So now let's go ahead and register that listener that we just created. So git server dot git plugin manager dot register events new block break listener. And we'll say this. Awesome. So you should know how to do all this already. That's why I'm going so fast. But let me go ahead and compile this and throw it on the server and let's see what happens. So currently I'm not opt. I don't have all the permissions on the server. So if I break this, it should not have let me. Oh, it didn't. Great. It was just lag. Great. It doesn't work. That's because I don't have the permission, all right? And if you want to, you can make it so that not only does it cancel the block break event, so it doesn't let them break the block, uh, it can also send them a message saying you don't have permission to break this block or something like that. If you want to, it's all up to you, all right? Um, so if I opt myself now, op Illuminati, ignore all those exceptions, it's from another plugin I'm working on. So now I can do, I can break the blocks, awesome. And that's pretty much it. So that's how you can define permissions for your plugins. That's how you can use the plugin.yml to define permissions for your commands, as well as define the permissions themselves. So the description, the children, and the default, um, whoever, the default person who gets the permissions, all right? And then I also showed you guys how to check for permissions in the code. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully this video was informative. I will see you in the next episode where I show you guys how to do configuration. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just wanna review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. 
for example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.